What would you say the consumer attitude towards EVs is right now? Probably confused. I'd say that you've got some people that are just absolutely flat out in and they know everything about EVs. And then you've got the masses that have no idea what's going on. Today, I'm going to be reacting to a super interesting interview with Sandy Monroe, an expert in the EV industry on Web's Edge Science. The title is Increasing Consumer Acceptance of EVs, Sandy Monroe, and it looks like it covers a lot of ground, so I'm excited to dive in. And unfortunately, there's a lot of miscommunication out there about what's good and bad about EVs, and so they're very hesitant or confused. What would you recommend to consumers to learn more about EVs? The best thing they can do is, is you know, do their homework. Um, there's quite a number of EVs that are out right now, but there's gonna be a flood of them. And um, what people need to do is find out what's the right thing to buy for their budget. And now that EVs are at about the same price, from a powertrain standpoint, $100 per kilowatt hour, was uh, that's what they need to know about. Um, and now that, that makes it the same price as driving um, a nice vehicle. The only difference is that it's very inexpensive. Right off the bat, Sandy dives into what he sees as the biggest hurdle for EVs right now, consumer confusion. He breaks it down into two groups, people who are super into EVs and know everything about them, and then everyone else who's just totally lost. He says there's a lot of bad information out there, which makes people hesitant or confused about whether EVs are a good choice. This totally resonates with me. EVs are such a complex topic, and it can be overwhelming to figure out if they're right for you. I hear all the time from people who are interested but just don't know where to start. Sandy suggests that consumers do their homework before jumping into the EV market. He says there are a ton of new EVs coming out, and it's important to find the one that fits your budget and needs. He mentions that the price of the battery pack, which is a major cost factor in EVs, is going down significantly. This is good news for consumers because it means EVs are becoming more affordable. An EV, once you buy it, there's virtually no cost. Your cost for transportation, your fuel, is a quarter of what you're going to get out of gas. And then there's no oil changes, there's no maintenance. Even your brake pads and your tires will last longer. What trends are you seeing that kind of are shaping the industry in the short term and the long term? If we look at the most advanced vehicle that's out there right now, that would be the Cybertruck. Sandy makes a really interesting point here. He says that while the upfront cost of an EV might be similar to a gas-powered car, the cost of ownership is much lower. EVs are way cheaper to fuel. He says charging costs about a quarter of what you'd spend on gas. Plus, there's basically no maintenance on an EV. No oil changes, no tune-ups, and even the brake pads and tires last longer because of regenerative braking. That's a huge advantage. The interview gets really interesting when Sandy starts talking about future trends. He mentions the Cybertruck as an example of some of the crazy innovations we're going to see in EVs. Features like drive-by wire steering and rear-wheel steering are going to make EVs not only safer, but also much more maneuverable. Sandy talks about how the shift to EVs is going to have a big impact on car part suppliers. Companies that can adapt to these new technologies, like ZF, which makes electric steer-by-wire systems, are going to thrive. But companies that are slow to change, or stuck in the past with old internal combustion engine technology, are going to be left behind. Sandy made a bold prediction in 2019 that by 2030, half of all new cars would be electric. He even says people laughed at him back then, but guess what? He now thinks that by 2028, we'll hit that mark. That's just a couple of years away. He says the price of EVs is going down so fast and the technology is improving so rapidly that electric cars are about to become the mainstream. Wow, that was a lot to unpack. I gotta say, I'm even more excited about the future of EVs after watching this interview. Sandy Monroe is a wealth of knowledge, and it's clear that EVs are the future. If you're even remotely curious about electric cars, I highly recommend checking out the full interview. And of course, let me know your thoughts on EVs down in the comments below. And um, so what, what's coming there is uh, there's no connection between your steering wheel and the front wheels. It's it's drive-by wire, same as what we would use in an airplane, fly-by wire. 
Um, it has uh, an ethernet loop that allows for much better self-driving characteristics. It's probably the safest vehicle on the planet ever. And I could take on a tank with that thing. And, um, and it's got rear wheel steering so that you can take a big monster truck and make it spin around like it's a, uh, you know, a Volkswagen. Wow. A Beetle, I should say. <laughs> I've always wanted one of those. Get a convertible. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, do you see a big transformation in the supply base as we transition to low carbon uh, propulsion systems? It depends on the, on the company. So one of the companies that we had a look at was ZF. ZF has made the transition to move away from just building transmissions, because that's what they were the best at. People with brains were using ZF. And they've moved away, and now they're into uh, uh, steer-by-wire, uh, rear-wheel steering, and a bunch of other different um, features and functions that you'll find on an electric car that you won't find on an ICE vehicle. So they've made the transmission. Others are not so lucky. And they waited too long, or they thought that maybe electrification wouldn't happen. They're in trouble. Uh, they're in deep trouble, yeah. Where do you see this industry in 10 years? I made a prediction in uh, 2019. I did a round the world tour. And at that time I said that by 2030, 50% uh, of the vehicles on the planet that are being produced are gonna be electric. And uh, that was met with uh, a lot of laughter and thumbs down. Now, I believe I was wrong. I believe it's 2028. And I can tell you right now, electrification is right around the corner. It doesn't cost as much as it used to. The price curve, is going down like hyperbolically. It's, uh, it's amazing, exponentially, I should say. And now we come to the latest Tesla news. Tesla recently unveiled the 2024 Model 3 Performance, which boasts significant improvements over its predecessors. When compared to other performance vehicles on the market, the Model 3 stands out for its value. For those considering an all-electric performance sedan, the Plaid Model S is also an option. This review will compare the new Model 3 performance with the Plaid Model S to determine if the extra cost of the Model S is justified or if the Model 3 offers a better deal. Previously, the gap between the Performance Model 3 and the Plaid Model S was substantial in terms of features and performance. However, the latest Model 3 performance has narrowed this gap considerably. In terms of acceleration, handling, and features, the new Model 3 performance is now much closer to the Plaid Model S. This makes it harder to justify the higher price of the Model S for many potential buyers. While the Plaid Model S is undeniably faster and offers around double the horsepower, the Model 3 performance is sufficiently close in everyday driving scenarios. The additional $34,000 or more required for the Plaid Model S may not be worth it for many buyers. The new Model 3 performance features a sleeker, more aerodynamic exterior, a refreshed interior with 360 die acoustic glass, improved insulation, and chassis enhancements for a quieter cabin. It also includes a new performance drive unit with more power, torque, and efficiency, adaptive suspension, upgraded brakes with track-ready pads, and new sport seats with heating and ventilation. Despite these upgrades, the price remains comparable to previous Model 3 performance generations, and it qualifies for a $7,500 tax credit, potentially lowering the base price to under $47,000. In contrast, the Plaid Model S does not qualify for this tax credit, leading to a price difference of $34,000 to $46,500 between the two models. The Plaid Model S offers more range due to its larger battery pack with up to 359 miles compared to the Model 3 Performance's 296 miles. The Plaid Model S's tri-motor setup delivers 1,020 horsepower, allowing it to achieve 0 to 60 MPS in just 1.99 seconds. The Model 3 Performance with 510 horsepower reaches 0 to 60 MPS in 2.9 seconds. When considering quarter-mile times, the Plaid Model S completes it in about 9.23 seconds, while the new Model 3 performance is estimated to finish in under 11 seconds. Beyond 60 melee space, the Plaid Model S continues to excel, highlighting its superior performance at higher speeds. The Plaid's advanced tri-motor setup with carbon overwrapped rotors contributes to this remarkable performance. The new Model 3 performance's adaptive suspension 
which adjusts in real time to optimize ride and handling, should enhance its driving dynamics. Though the Plaid Model S's air suspension might outperform it in certain aspects, the Model 3's lighter weight and improved nimbleness make it a joy to drive. In terms of interior space, the Model 3 offers more front headroom and legroom than the Model S, though the latter provides more overall interior and cargo space. Charging speeds are also comparable, with the Model 3 performance charging slightly faster than the Plaid Model S from 10% to 80%. Technologically, both vehicles share many core features, but the Model S boasts a more premium audio system, larger screens, and an integrated driver's display. Despite these advantages, the differences are not drastic. In conclusion, while the Plaid Model S is worth the extra cost for those seeking peak performance, additional cargo space, and premium features, the Model 3 performance offers excellent value. It is fast, handles well, has a spacious interior, and is significantly more affordable. For the average buyer, the Model 3 performance is a better choice, providing substantial savings without compromising much on performance or features. Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinions. The sold-out Cybertruck model is finally back in stock. If you missed the boat last time, this is your second and last chance to get yours and join hundreds of people who made thousands from reselling these special models with special serial numbers.